Hello my soccer universe, slightly different environment, driving with a small car today and yeah, slightly different jersey than I thought what I would be wearing, I would have been wearing a jersey from the same group that I'm wearing, the Valencia jersey, but yeah, we'll talk about the mayhem at Stamford Bridge where Ajax looked like the sure winner and then, I don't know, it just turned, uh, one, in one sequence it all turned around that they could actually have lost it. And there were other games yesterday too where a lead is not safe in the Champions League. A lead is absolutely not safe in the Champions League. This is for me the most remarkable thing of them all. Uh, that teams come back where you never thought that they would come back. Um, we'll talk about all that. I mean, the other thing before we go in, in, into the game is that uh, early games were the two early games were practically snooze fests, which uh, given that there was Barcelona in there was the really uh, the surprising part. And yeah, I saw snooze fest. Uh, yes, I was a little bit tired, but I napped through those games. Uh, they didn't keep me up. But then the the late games, I mean, from the get-go, goals, 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 goals. I think in the first five minutes we had four goals already scored, so uh, that made more than up for it. Um, wearing Valencia, because Valencia did manage to uh, win late. Uh, but, you know, to be honest, there were not too many eligible uh, teams of the ones that I have to wear, I think other than Valencia, the teams that I think could be proud is Leipzig, but if I don't have Le Leipzig, no, no Archer, how proud I would be of those. Um, Lyon, as we will see, did well, um, so don't have Lyon. Uh, Slavia, don't have Slavia, those would already, and Dortmund, I don't, I don't have Dortmund, so uh, those would be for me the permissible jerseys <laughs> of teams to wear. Um, as we see, Group E, I don't have anyone in there. Yes, um, we had a 2-1 win for Liverpool and we had a 1-1 draw for uh, Napoli and Salzburg. And yes, this is actually getting a point against Napoli for Saul. Salzburg, I think, is a good result, but um, not sure how much it does for their hopes for advancing from the group. Um, it might be just a little bit too little. Um, let's talk first about the situation in the group and then we'll talk about the games. Um, Liverpool now leads the group with 9 points, Napoli with 8, uh, Salzburg has 4 points and um, Genk has uh, 1 point. So um, yes, there is still a way, but I think Napoli and uh, Liverpool will make it through this group. Salzburg definitely, if they want to have any chance of advancing, they need to get the win against um, uh, Genk away. Genk, yeah, Genk. Uh, away, and then they need to win at home against Liverpool. Um, so, two results that are mm, rather unlikely, I would say. Uh, I mean, one, the Genk result, I think they, it's in them. A win against Liverpool depends on where Liverpool mentally is. Um, let's talk quickly. Liverpool, uh, they did their best to get the win without exerting themselves because there's the big game next uh, weekend. Uh, we'll talk about it the one to watch. We have Liverpool City, and I think this has been the overarching theme for Liverpool the entire week already that you just want to get out of. Uh, want to get out of the, um, those games with getting your wins with the favorite result 2-1 but um, you don't want to exert yourselves too much so uh, Salah was playing, Mane and Firmino were not um, it was Origi and Oxley Chamberlain uh, on the front and they played with minimum effort yes created chances um, got with the first shot on goal a really quirky goal through one album. Um, it gotta be seen to be believed that that actually went in and there was no offside whatsoever. I mean, Milner was not offside and the ball counter comes in. Uh, 
I did it. If you can, can I get it a win? Uh, Vanilla puts it in the corner from a short distance. It was a, a, one of one of those really really weird goals. Uh, they have more chances. I think uh, uh, seven nil shots of or whatever when Genk with the first shot on goal. Uh, Samata, I think. Uh, heads it in and makes it 1-1 one, one, and you're thinking mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but Liverpool is Liverpool, Oxford Chamberlain in the second half makes it 2-1 and then they played home safely I mean again with as little effort as possible because there's a the big game Sunday afternoon Burnham, that's the one that needs to be uh, that is the important one and everyone knows it um, Napoli Salzburg <laughs> I actually, I really like. They have played now for the fourth time this year. I really like those two teams playing it in, uh, against each other because Napoli clearly is the better team. However, Salzburg, with the way of we, we were playing, if they take take the chances, they can match Napoli punch for punch, and it's so it's such an intriguing match because goals are almost guaranteed. Uh, Napoli really is. In crazy form. If the goalposts were 20 centimeters wider, I think Napoli would have scored, I think, three or four more goals. I mean, they had twice in the woodwork uh, yesterday. Um, have a big chance, and then in the 10th minute, they already get uh, Salzburg gets a penalty, and uh, this already saw Bully Bali. He was too late in the tank. Uh, this was a penalty, and Holland, in his only good action of the game puts it home, uh, make it 1-0. Uh, F what comes then is a barrage of attacks for Napoli who completely dominate the game. Just cannot get their way in. I mean, as I said, they hit once the will wall in the first half. Uh, they have other chances to really get the goal, but they do not get it until, and in the meantime, Salzburg will even have uh, made a second one. Uh, which would have been a little bit too much, to be honest. But uh, Irving Lozano, just before halftime, uh, rewards now Napoli with the equalizer. Fully deserved equalizer at that. There was a little uh, insignia in the build-up. The ball touched his hand. They looked, they looked at it. I think, I have to say yes, yes, they worked in a lot of common sense decisions most of the time and so it was there as well. So it ends 1-1 uh, at the half, second half, similar picture except the Salzburg uh, goes back to the familiar system uh, which gives the team more stability and uh, Napoli cannot run as rampant and the game is a little bit more even still slight advantage Napoli so Salzburg gets a lucky point uh, that keeps as I said the hopes alive but not much more than that. Group F, um, snooze fest in Barcelona. I saw the time that Messi hit the post bar for the ball, whatever, the typical Messi run along the sideline, then he cuts in um, and takes the shot. And I don't know, I have not seen highlights, but Barcelona seems to be a team without much confidence at the moment. Again, I don't want to use the word crisis if you're first in the league. Yes, you did not have a good string as well, but if you're first in the league, you're not in crisis. I'm sorry. But clearly, uh, Barcelona can improve, and it seems the over reliance on Messi, whether designed by Messi or Valverde, I don't know. Um, it seems that if Messi is playing with Griezmann and Dembele, you can almost be sure that there's nothing happening. Uh, Messi needs at least Suarez in there. That's a pity. The Dortmund game, though, that was one of those crazy games and a deadly sin for the Italians. I mean, Dortmund knows a win is good. They need that. Um, they go all out on attack, more or less, and get caught in a counter right at the beginning of the game. Uh, Lautaro Martinez, he kind of elbows the defender out of the way on the center line and then Hummels is just accompanying him down the field I mean he starts at the center line all the way on the outside and then runs 
almost unobstructed in 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 and can put the goal easily. I thought this was a really weird defensive mistake by Dortmund. Uh, Dortmund then doesn't give up, go forward, but a little bit too naive. One is uh, one wants to say it, uh, because um, who was it? Um, Resino with a very similar counter attack makes it 2 0 at the half. And it was a little bit manic as well. It was a typical Italian game. Massive defense and going forward, uh, deadly count, 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 counter attacks. So you think Inter is safe, and with that win, Inter uh, would be favored to go through. <laughs> Dortmund immediately comes back after the half and gets the goal through Hakimi very early on. And then on their own throw in, Alcasa comes on. Inter has, has a throw in. Alcasa steals the ball, gives it to Brandt, who slaloms in, makes it 2-2. Uh, I think it was about an hour was played. I mean, absolutely nuts. And from that moment, the riding was on the wall. Inter could not fight back into the game. And they even give up the third through Hakimi, who has scored four goals in the Champions League. The only other player for Dortmund to score in the Champions League is Julian Brandt. Uh, that's a story in, in itself. Dortmund now looking really good in this group. Um, seven points, Inter has four, Barcelona has eight. So, uh, Slavia picked up two away points at uh, Inter and uh, Barcelona. That's also a feat in itself. You really have to say an Italian team giving up a 2 nil lead away from home or even giving up a 2 nil lead. That is unheard of and I mean Conte needs to there will be questions asked of Conte let's put it that way I mean in Italy they're gonna kill him I mean you cannot give up a game that you have safely in control you cannot give up like that absolutely not uh, don't get me wrong I mean Milan fan here yeah so I'm not that unhappy about Inter I'm, I'm just thinking about the Italian Ranking, but yeah, uh, Germany is most likely overtaking uh, uh, Italy again. So uh, that was a crazy game. Inter, I think, had a few chances in the end, but uh, completely messed up that one. Dortmund looking good, as I said. Uh, Group G, another early game. Leipzig, who completely dominated uh, Zenit, uh, although Zenit had a few good chances. Uh, in stoppage time, as Moon won, where he doesn't hit the ball right and cross, 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 and just past the goal. Um, but then a free kick is given that Sabitzer gets in, into the wall, and I think Demme uh, slams it into the net, makes it 1 0, very much deserved. And then uh, in the second half, uh, Zenit, who has been more passive in the first and second half, uh, gives the Gets a little bit forward, but catch a count and Sabitzer makes it 2 0 for Leipzig, who is now leading nine points. And Lyon really has no trouble with Benfica. I don't get why Benfica was playing. I mean, the, both Lyon and Benfica matchups were kind of weird. Uh, if Benfica can play in all red, I think it would look better than if they play in all black. But that's me. Benfica is for me a little bit of a mystery how they are in that group are not doing better. That is an absolute mystery to me, I think. Uh, uh, Benfica was for me the second best team in that group, I have to say. Uh, no, now at the moment it looks Leon. Leon gets a 3-1 win. Um, especially the, I mean, it was never really in danger, I have to say. I, had, I really had the feeling that Leon is gonna dominate, is uh, running away comfortably. So. Uh, so that group Leipzig 9, Lyon has now 7 points, um, I think Zenit has 4 and Befica has 3 or something like that. You'll see it in the, uh, on the side here, but uh, it seems uh, that Leipzig and Lyon will be the teams getting out of there. Um, quickly Valencia, um, going down to Lille in the first half and that was it looked better, this matchup. Uh, remember in Lille when Valencia played with orange pants? I didn't like that one one bit. Uh, that one I liked better, but it's still a little bit confusing with the little jerseys uh, having this kind of fade with the 
red, white and blue, but I think it looked alright. I, I like Valencia better with the black. I am not so fond of the orange color. Uh, that gotta be clearly said as well. But yeah. Um, they go down 1-0 uh, in the first half in a game that they actually were slightly better in the second half. They really go for the juggler and they get a penalty. I don't know why Fonte was complaining. I mean, he's sliding down, but his arm is way up. It's the hand. I mean, sorry. Uh, new rules, old rules, that is a penalty. Um, Panenka style gets a little bit too often on Panenka style by Parejo. Then an own goal uh, in the around the 80th um, makes it to that. That, uh, that penalty was um, midway through the second half. Then um, the, an own goal, kind of a weird deflection, makes it 2-1 for Valencia. Then Kondok Bia pulls out a great shot in the 84th. That probably was one of the two goals of the evening, I would say. And it, Torres makes it late 4-1. So Valencia get a win at, um, against Lille, which keeps them in contention because the game of the evening, bar none, was a Stamford Bridge. Um, first of all, yeah, I like that Chelsea was in blue and I like that Ajax played in their regular jersey. This is what I would have expected in Amsterdam as well. But the socks, I know going crazy here but black socks for Ajax don't look well why cannot Chelsea for once play in all blue and let Ajax play in all white and we're all happy uh, no one cares about the white socks for Chelsea that much honestly uh, yeah. having that out of way Ajax takes a very very early early lead uh, free kick Quincy promise that is takes a wicked deflection by Abraham and it's one nil for Ajax I think in the second minute the problem is that a minute later Pulisic uh, goes into the box and is fouled, I think you can argue twice fouled. I was hoping that uh, the VAR will find something, but it was a clear penalty. Jorginho hop it up, makes, uh, puts the ball into the net, 1-1, uh, but then what follows is a demonstration by Ajax. Um, and they score the goals, Quincy Promise uh, fr uh, from the... I think around the 20th and so on. Uh, nice crossing by Ziyech and Quincy Promise just uh, with his head goes down, puts it in the net. I thought it may have been offside, could have been if you take other lines like millimeter, millimeter, or whatever. I was glad that it in it because to me this looked, as I said, common sense decision. You look at it uh, with the with, 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 with the naked eye, it doesn't look like that it's uh, offside position to me. And I actually think. We should not use the lines. I think the referee should use uh, still pictures and then decide whether it's offside or not. Don't use those calibrated lines because they drive everyone nuts, honestly. But yeah, so we have uh, a 2 1 for Ajax. Ziek then with a free kick almost from the corner flag puts it under on the post, hits Kepa in the face, and it goes in, into net. 3 1 Ajax. Gets even better. Uh, in the second half, Donny van der Beek again from Ziek. Uh, gets a fourth one for Ajax and Ajax seems like cruising and I have to stop doing this because you know I'm always thinking which jersey will I wear for, for the video and I was thinking oh yeah this is Ajax, this is Ajax all the way as we equate to put one back not shortly thereafter okay yeah 2-4 we know that Ajax gives up a few goals the problem is that Ajax then uh, instead of counting the game down they went forward and then get called again in the count, counter and uh, Danny Blind makes probably one foul and the second one that was on Abraham that was was a second yellow card. Stefano Rocchi, great referee. A little bit too tedious yesterday, I have, I have to say. Um, let's the game play on. Uh, shot Feldman and at first I thought it's ridiculous. No, but he has the arm a little bit off and then it goes back. Yes, it's a hand penalty. We can discuss about how uh, useful this rule is, and we all know that this new uh, hand law with the silhouette is it's just uh, crazy. I just know when the referee calls that one, and in Italy this is called regularly, and if he goes to VR, it's kind of be overturned. Where I have a problem with 
is that Feldman was already on a yellow and you give him a second yellow. So within 20 seconds, you give Ajax two red cards, two yellow reds. That to me was a little bit too much. Um, there we have the, in Germany saying Fingerspitzengefühl. This is where you have to say, okay, yes, by the letter, letter of the law, this is a, a yellow card, but okay, let's not. Um, I cannot give two yellow reds in short succession. I mean, at that moment, the game completely turned and I knew two men down, Ajax, now, and the penalty. That makes it 3-4, Jorginho did it. Uh, now at the other uh, corner, on and now, of course, chose the corner from, from, from before, but this is the mind game with the referees. I knew 3-4, uh, Chelsea is going to get at least a point out of it, because I mean, not only are two players out, but it's two defenders that you cannot really replace, and Ajax still tries to play nice. Of course, they get shot after the 4-4, and uh, Aspicate almost made it 5-4, but that one was ruled out by for a handball, and to be fair, I would not have ruled that one out. I guess it touches it, but... Uh, Stupid. Again, okay, at least it stays 4-4. Uh, and how Ajax hung on, I didn't see much of that, I don't know. But that game was absolutely crazy. And I think... I'm not saying the referee did wrong here. He just, I think he could have done a little bit wiser here. But he's a very experienced referee. I think he's probably one of the deepest referee around. The game was crazy. I mean, Ajax don't, don't dominate it, but in, in, in the end, I think both coaches will be happy with the 4-4. Or maybe not, I mean, knowing coaches. Because uh, at one point, Chelsea was thinking, yeah, we're not gonna make anything in this game. And then Ajax is just hanging out for dear life. Absolutely not, absolutely not. But that's the Champions League. This is why the Champions League is the best competition. Now we have three teams in this group with seven points. The only thing I have to say is that, um, to me, it seems like that Chelsea and Ajax might be the better ones because um, they both have still games against Lille. So this might help them a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know, to be honest, uh, how it will pan out because Ajax now has two defenders missing and I'm not sure that will be enough to get the win at little bit. They will need a lot will hinge on the uh, Valencia-Chelsea matchup in the next round. I think that will tell us a little bit more about those because if Valencia wins that one and Ajax only gets a draw, then yeah, it will be difficult. Anyway, great matches. I'm afraid today will not live, live up to that drama from yesterday. I think groups E to H are the much more exciting ones than A to D. But let's see how it will go today. There's also Europa League, Arsenal Guimaraes in Portugal, of course. And yeah, let me know about the games yesterday. As I said, uh, the the two big results, the Dortmund one and the Ajax one. And yeah, I'm not so happy with the referees. Um, Overall, especially the Ajax game, although I can understand what was happening. I just, maybe I'm not, I shouldn't say I'm not happy with the referees, except for the second red card. Uh, the handball rules are the, are the ones that really um, tick me off as of late. Uh, that is the one thing that VAR completely took over, because most of those handballs that are given now would never have been given two years ago. And that is something that I I find is a little bit wrong, but hey. Uh, again, let me know what you thought about the games yesterday. Drop a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Again, a car video. Uh, and yeah, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.